Who better to frame the debates and highlight the differences between the three parties than our popular Wednesday MPs? Liberal MP Roger Kuzner, NDP Deputy Leader Megan Leslie, Conservative MP James Rajat. Welcome to you all. I'd like to get your thoughts, Megan, if I could, on, on this whole foo for all over the Supreme Court, a uh, tussle with Stephen Harper and the Chief Justice. It seems to me the Prime Minister is basically saying, look, I knew there might have been a problem. That's why I didn't want her to consult with me. Therefore, I did nothing wrong. What did he do that was so wrong? What did he do that was so wrong? You're going to say, what did he do that was so right? But, I mean, <laughs> you've got the, dean, the deans of law weighing yeah. in across the country. That's a new development today, joining the pile on. But I'm just so curious. So, so I, let's even take aside the timing and, and question whether or not he really thought there was a problem that far in advance when there wasn't a candidate, right? Let's, let's take all that aside. He sent out a press release attacking the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of Canada. That's unheard of. Um, I mean, there we have different branches of government, right? She is the right honorable Beverly McLaughlin. I've never seen a Prime Minister take on a Chief Justice. Uh, I think it shows complete disrespect for this branch of government. I think it uh, it's, I almost lack the words, but luckily the Canadian Bar Association uh, put together this letter of, of the, you know, the 11 top folks talking about it, and they said it beautifully. They're, they're, they have ex extreme concerns about where this is going. This actually calls into question the rule of law, and it's out outrageous that the Prime Minister would do this. Okay, Roger, I wouldn't mind your thoughts, because I didn't have liberals on yesterday. Well, we had uh, this understanding that uh, the Prime Minister was this master uh, visionary and you know had uh, everything he did was with purpose uh, Canadians are starting to look at it now I, I, he's got anger management problems and if you disagree with him like if you stand in his way then he, he, the, you have a target on you and, and just you know go down the list from uh, you know the uh, parliamentary budget officer to uh, you, you know uh, took a shot at uh, uh, at uh, Sheila Fraser last week. I mean, the, you know, the elections uh, uh, commissioners, uh, just all the way down the line. But this one here, uh, th this one here, sort of. I'm hearing conservatives saying, "What the name of Jumpins is? Uh, you know, is is he thinking going after Beverly McLaughlin?" So uh, I, I would think when there's ripples going through the conservative are you caucus. Are he's backing down a little bit? James Rajat on on his initial position, which was that it was an inappropriate thing done, and now he seems to be saying, "Well." She didn't do anything appropriate. I didn't either, basically. Yeah, and I, I frankly wish we would lower the temperature on the... I mean, <laughs> the, the, the Prime Minister... Tell know. Steve. Okay, okay guys. <laughs> no, but seriously. See, they're very close friends, Megan, and yes. the Prime Minister. <laughs> Look, um, on those two, on on those two decisions, on the Senate reform and Mark Nodo, I actually disagree with the majority of the Supreme Court. Like, we can have disagreements in, in an open democratic society. We shouldn't sort of say, well, James Rajat is attacking the Supreme Court because he happens to think he can reform the Senate uh, without having a disagreement. I mean, I, one of the Supreme Court justices is a, is a friend of mine. I consider a friend. We disagree on many things. This is not something that we, frankly, ought to blow out of proportion and say there's an attack going on. The Prime Minister sought uh, outside legal advice with respect to the appointment of Mark Nadal, and he, the legal advice told him that, in fact, he could appoint someone in Quebec from the federal court. Frankly, I agree with his position that if you exclude anyone from the federal court from, from who happens to be in Quebec from serving on the Supreme Court, I think you are limiting the case. That's not the same case as it is in the province of Alberta, so it should be a common standard. But again, the Supreme Court has rendered its judgment on that, and the Prime Minister, as you showed in his open clip, is accepting that judgment because, mm -hmm. yeah, as Megan pointed out, they are... I mean, I agree with you. I agree with the whole beginning of your statement about we can disagree with court decisions. Absolutely. But it is the, it is the law. Yeah, and that's so right. then the Prime Minister Once says that judgment, her phone call was inappropriate. And then we have the Minister of Justice stand up in the House of Commons. He is bound by the Barristers Act of Nova Scotia. And as lawyers in Nova Scotia, we or they, they are bound to uphold and defend the courts. And yet we have Peter McKay standing up basically doing a smear campaign. But, but Megan, like seriously? Yes, a, seriously. A smear campaign. Do you seriously. Think, do by, you, saying, by saying that... Do you think judges are activists and they like writing letters about what are, the Prime Minister is doing? No. That, that we are in two separate branches and we ought to respect the branch and there's going to be some disagreements from time to time? That equates a smear campaign? It is profound I, that these letters have been written by judges and lawyers who are not activists. Pretty big pile on. All right, I want to move along to your area of expertise, temporary foreign workers. And yes. I, I, I'm curious. You're from Cape Breton. I am. You tell me how hard times are there and people are looking for jobs yet there are temporary workers flooding into Cape Breton how come either you flooding don't have a late flooding in well, 300 a or something yeah, yeah, 300 yeah, yeah. but that's a lot well, listen 
It's a legitimate a program. Uh, it's a legitimate program. wrote a letter program. for all of them, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> I believe, no. if, if we didn't have temporary foreign workers in the agricultural industry, I doubt very much if we would have uh, an agricultural industry in Nova Scotia. Uh, and, and that's a fact. I, I know a farmer, he's been bringing in uh, uh, Jamaican workers for 20 years. Uh, they're fabulous in the fields, they love to, you know, they love to cut lettuce and, and, and harvest and what have you. Those are legit, that's a legitimate use of the program. I know they've, they've gone after the NDP about writing these letters of support for temporary foreign workers. There, there are all kinds of legitimate needs for temporary foreign workers. but. You know, this isn't he's a bad right, program. Right, They've managed it badly. That's where. That's where. You know. So well, we're saying, mend it, don't end it. All right. How have they managed it badly? I mean, they put a moratorium on hospitality we, workers. We put so. a moratorium on food service. I mean, the minister has taken a series of actions with respect to those companies. He's put those companies on a blacklist that have abused the program, which I think is appropriate. But I think what's missing, and, and you know, I agree with some of what Roger said, in the sense of there are many people who have legitimately used the program. And my concern is, especially in my area, where there's there's a real shortage of people in certain areas, in all types of areas. I mean, I don't want us sort of demonizing all these employers, the, the couple that owns three subways, one in Edmonton, two in Iskew and Leduc, and they, they find enough people for Edmonton, they can't find enough people for Iskew and Leduc, so we're saying to them, well, this will not be an option for you going forward. The, the fact is, in certain sectors, it's very hard to find Canadians to fill those roles, and it, within certain companies, like, you know, this one person in my riding employs 75 people, 70 Canadians, and five temporary foreign workers. But if you take the five temporary foreign workers out, it's very hard then to keep that operation going. So that's something we have to consider. We're running out of time, so I'm going to go, I'll get to you on other issues. I want to play a clip now from Justin Trudeau earlier today when reporters asked him about his position on abortion. Here's what he had to say. It is not... Uh, for any government to legislate uh, what happened, what a woman chooses to do with her body. And that is uh, the bottom line there. I have uh, made it clear that uh, future candidates uh, need to uh, be uh, completely uh, understanding that they will be expected to vote uh, pro-choice uh, on any bills. Megan, mm -hmm. as a lowly man, I have no position on this, but I'm curious, is he wrong to make that decree and say, thou shalt not run for the Liberal Party if you're anti-abortion? I think what he's doing is creating two tiers of support for, for choice, two tiers of support for women's rights. So he's not saying you've got to be pro-choice. He's saying you've got to sign a paper saying you're going to vote with pro-choice. And I think that's a problem. Like I look at the NDP policy is we are pro-choice. If you are a new Democrat, that's who you are. It's, it's, it's sort of like a core value, right? So we, we have this position. You can't have, like I said, these, this two tiers of whether you support or not and, well, I'm going to do it because my leader told me to, but actually I'm against it. It, it makes no sense to me. James, like, I mean, there are more pro, what do they call it, anti-abortion, pro-life, whatever you want to call it. There are members in your caucus. Uh, yeah, we have different on, views in our caucus. Different views. Is this an inappropriate <laughs> step by Justin Trudeau to sort of say, look, a third of Canadians that might support uh, anti-abortion legislation, thou shalt not be allowed to run for a major party. I, I think it is a mistake, and I think, I mean, the Prime Minister has been very clear in terms of the government's position is the government will not reintroduce any legislation on abortion, will not support any legislation on abortion, but there are clearly members in our caucus who are pro-life, there's clearly members who are pro-choice, there are clearly members who may find themselves in the middle on that issue. Uh, but the fact is to sort of, as a political party, say no one who expresses that viewpoint in Canadian society is welcome to run as a candidate for us. You're basically saying to them, you're not welcome in our coalition. And I, you know, I grew up Catholic and there was a lot of people in that church that I went to who voted Liberal and New Democrat. And I think increasingly, not maybe not in the NDP party, but in the Liberal party, if they just say there's not a home for me there whatsoever, that I can't even express my view, hold my view and be a Liberal, yeah, I think it's a mistake on their part politically. So in our party, we will continue to welcome people who are pro-choice and who are pro-life. Roger, this is your party. Uh, uh, like I'm comfortable with the uh, leader's position. He, uh, you, you know, he's reflecting a, a policy that came off the uh, uh, from the the membership. It came off the policy floor in uh, 2012. Um, you know, we, we've long been uh, the a party of uh, of choice. Does mean uh, someone that wants to run for you that supports the death penalty can't run? Pardon me? Someone wants to support the death penalty. They can't run as a liberal because 
we, Your policy is not to support the death penalty? Yeah, so and we don't support that. I don't think we've got a, a formal policy that came off the floor, but that, that's what he was he was reflecting, and I thought it was appropriate that he uh, uh, grandfathered. We, we have one member of our caucus uh, uh, who, who's pro-life and, uh, you know, very well-respected, uh, uh, important uh, curmudgeon in our party, uh, and, jo and John point? McKay. Uh, doesn't that prove Megan's point? That there's sort of different standards within the party. Oh, well, but we adopted this as a policy in 2012. So, you know, I, I, think, he's being, get out. I think he's right. being respectful of that uh, uh, of the members. So I'm comfortable with that. Okay, thank you all. Very comfortable, Roger and Megan. No Farley Mowat. You. You're always comfortable, all. No Farley Mowat. You're gonna surf. Oh yeah. Right? What's your favorite Farley Mowat book? Quickly. Well, don't. Hey, uh, he's a river bourgeois. He's summered in river bourgeois. So he's got uh, the boat that wouldn't float. All right, Megan. Lost in the Barrens. Mr. Little Farren, Grade Six, read it to us. Uh, no Man's River. I like the dog that wouldn't be, but I read it when I was like eight years old. All right, thank you all. Appreciate you coming. We'll see you next week.